profiling and uh, debugging Drupal. What we want to achieve from this is we should be able to find out any bottleneck or anywhere in our application, any code or anything which is hindering the performance of the application in terms of memory, in terms of uh, CPU, or in terms of the time it takes to, to render the function. We will uh, look at different tools. Uh, basically, when there is a server-side issue with an application, it can either be on the web server, it can be in your application, or it can be in your database. There can be different ways in which we can troubleshoot the server or the database. But primarily, today, we are going to focus about how do we troubleshoot a Drupal application. <coughs> so there are certain tools that we have which are very useful. Uh, the most commonly used tool and easy, easiest to configure is Devil. And then there's a small miniature size module called Memory Profiler which gives you the memory footprints of a function or of, of a page load. Then there's a very uh, advanced tool called XHProf. Uh, it's basically a contribution by Facebook which uh, gives you a lot of insight about about which function has taken how much time in terms of memory, in terms of clock cycles. And then <coughs> there's a debugging tool called xdebug. We can use this tool to look inside our function. We can run our code function by, debug our code function by function, and we can see a lot of things happening in that function. And these tools, especially the last two, xhprof and xdebug, xdebug will give you a lot of insight of your code. And it will also help you understand how Drupal, Drupal works, right, if you use these tools. And uh, I recommend using these tools not only just for, you know, finding the bottleneck or uh, while profiling or debugging your system, but also to understand, you know, the, the stuff that happens in Drupal under the hood. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sure most of you are aware about Devil module. Uh, how many of you are new to Devil module or have not used this ever? No one. So I'm assuming everyone knows about Devil, so I'll just go through the slides. I'll not go through the actual workflow of Devil at all. We'll start with XHProf then. So the most important uh, stuff that uh, Devil uh, gives us is the query logs, which you can see at the bottom of the page. Uh, when we have so when your page ends, Devil has a list of all the queries that was fired to render this page, and uh, it also tells you the time and it marks the queries which have which have taken a lot of time in red. You can set the threshold for this. And you will be able to find out the number of times a query was called and the amount of time that the query has taken. Generally, you will see your cache get and cache set functions marked as red in this because that takes a lot of time to you know, write and read from the cache tables. Besides that, Devil comes with a lot of config configuration options. Uh, you can uh, execute a custom PHP code. It will, uh, it will give you a nice, pretty formatted var dump of all the variables, all the page variables. There are other stuff that you can do uh, in Devil. If you go to Devil settings, it tells you whether you can uh, uh, have a, uh, do you want to have a query, query log at the bottom of the page. You can also configure xhprof to work with Devil. But we also have an xhprof module, uh, which is a separate module for uh, doing xhprof stuff, or we have, we have external tools as well to do XHProf profiling. Then you can enable all these options, page, uh, display page time, display memory usage. You can have a display redirection path whenever there is a Drupal go to, or you can have a dollar page array which is already there. And you can have a machine name of the permissions and modules. These are pretty con uh, some basic configurations that Devil modules provide, provides. It also provides a provides an option to uh, rebuild your theme registry, which means every time your page will load, the theme registry will be rebuilt. This is 
generally used for front-end stuff when you are uh, uh, making a lot of change in your TPL and you want that to happen immediately, you can enable this. Besides that, this, Devil also offers three uh, functions which are very useful, which are like Vadum. We generally, when we are debugging, we use either Vadum or Printer. But Devil gives you three functions which you know, have, has a pretty nice formatting, a little better than So this is DPR, DPM, and DVM. D so it is a print-friendly version of, of, of variables that you can get. You might want to use this instead of Vadum. Then we have DPM, which sets uh, the variables in the, your Drupal set message. And then you can have the configuration, the, the VARS, the message by DVM, right? You can use these three functions. They are very uh, good, func uh, good functions, which you can use in your, uh, in your, in your code. You can set this anywhere and you can see uh, the results. This will give you a lot of insight about what is happening. So I don't think we need to talk much about Devil anymore. So there's also one small module, memory profile. If you do not want to install XHProf or do a lot of XDebug and stuff, you can just install this module and you will uh, get your uh, memory footprints of every page in your database logs, in your DB log. We can see that quickly, if I go to You can see entries here. Is it not very clear? So every page that I access, it it logs the amount of memory that has been taken by the by the page. So basically you can see the admin pages are taking a lot of memory. By default, uh, your PHP comes with a ma uh, with memory limit of 64. If you set that, these pages will, will get a white screen of death. So you can have a quick look at the kind of memory your application is using. You should not be too much worried about uh, the memory which is taken by the admin pages, but definitely the pages which are user facing should not take a lot of memory. Now we get to the interesting part where we uh, will be using XHProf. XHProf is a uh, contribution by Facebook. Uh, it can be installed in several ways and installing XHProf might take a while. So the easiest way to install XHProf is using PCL, right? You can do PCL install XHProf beta and, and then you need to make it change in your php.ini file, you need to load the extension, and then you are set. You need to restart, restart your Apache, and XHProf will start logging all the events. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at how XHProf GUI looks like, but before that, I'll just uh, tell you the steps which are involved in installing XHProf, because you might find it a little difficult to install XHProf. XHProf itself does not provide a very good GUI. So there are three ways in which we can use uh, XHProf. One is with uh, Devil module. The other one is using the XHProf module that uh, 
that uh, Drupal has. The third one is using XSGUI. What we're gonna see today is XSGUI because it is a separate uh, and it has a good interface which, which is easy to install. I mean, not so easy to install, but yes, we'll see how to do that. So you can download XSGUI. We have a, Git, uh, we have a GitHub URL, you can download it. XSGUI also comes with XSProf, so you need to just go to extensions or you just have to read the install file. The install file tells you clearly how to install XSProf. There are certain steps that you might want to take care about. First of all, install XSProf by, you know, the common make, make test and make install command. The second dot configure might differ for you. It might not al always be in user bin PHP config. So to find that out, you just need to type this command wh which PHP config and you'll get the config path. You need to add that config part here in the second step. Once you install XHProf, after that, you need to edit your PHP INI and write that line extensions called to xhprof.so. It's fairly easy to install on a Linux machine. Uh, it's not very complicated on uh, Mac or Windows either. And then uh, for the GUI to work, you need to have a database set with XHGUI. So you can go to your MySQL and create a database called XHProf. And you need to edit this config.php file where you have to specify your database settings. Just the database settings, uh, we might want to look at this at once. So just copy the default config file into uh, default config to config.php. Set your database parameters. You can also restrict users from, uh, from which IP address should access, access prof be accessible. So that you specify little. Better? So just the basic database configuration like the config file in, uh, in Drupal. And then you need to s specify this uh, dot binary for, uh, for call graphs. We'll see what call graphs are. And then you need to just take care of this controller IPs. So controller IPs are the IP address which you want to allow access prof to be accessible from. If you want to, rest uh, to remove this restriction, if you want everybody or anybody to access access prof, you just need to uncomment that line, control IP equals to false. By default, it is true. You just, it is, by default, it is commented out. You just need to remove the comment. After doing the settings, you have to determine which uh, database extension you are using for PHP. Most probably, you'll be using P PDO. You need to just... Uh, You will find uh, the relative uh, the uh, the queries that you want to run in your database that you have created in in this path dbs util slash db and the database uh, for example if you are using mysql it will be mysql dot uh, mysql dot php or mysql i or pdo there is a default database uh, create table query which you can copy from here and paste it in your uh, or run that query against your database that you have created. It will create create one table and that table will uh, store all the XHProf information. After doing all these things, if you visit
this URL, you will see something like this. This is the, uh, the, the, uh, the listing page of uh, XHGUI. This shows all the tests that has, that has run till now. To be able to run a test, all you need to do is, you need to go to uh, your installation uh, or any Drupal instance which you want to test. You just need to start this, the test by underscore profile equals to one. Once you do that, this will start logging all your, uh, it will start profiling this page. When you go to the bottom of this page, you will see a, one second, not any page for that matter. You will see a, a profiler uh, link. It is not coming because there is, there is a, menu, small menu here, which will lead, lead, you, lead you to this page. So we can see the links that we have uh, profiled till now. If you click this link, you will see a detailed uh, profile page, which shows the number of times this, prof uh, this page has been profiled, the minimum wall time, the maximum wall time that this page has taken, the average wall time, and the 95 percentile. 95 percentile is basically eliminating the edge cases. So this page is kind of taking six seconds. The wall time is the amount of time that the user has to wait for that request or the total time that has been spent in, uh, in processing that page. If you go further down, you will see the details of the functions, right? The call count of the functions, how many times the function has been called, and then you have wall time. Wall time is, again, the clock time, the time that has, uh, the function has taken to execute, the CPU cycles that, uh, uh, that the function has taken to execute, the memory usage, the peak memory usage, it is the, the highest amount of memory that the, the process has taken, uh, that the function has taken at a, any given amount of time. Then there's exclusive wall time. The difference between wall time and exclusive wall time is that Wall time considers the time that, the fun that has been spent in the function as well as its child function. Exclusive wall time is the time that has been spent only by that function. So these two are very important parameters to understand, wall time and exclusive wall time. Again, same goes with exclusive CPU, the amount of CPU cycle that has been spent in, in that function, excluding the child functions. And the exclusive peak, peak usage of memory is the same thing. By looking at this function, you can tell which functions or what is taking too much time. So first thing that you should see is sort this by call count. You'll get a list of calls that has been uh, called very often. There are certain, uh, certain calls that you, cannot, uh, that, you, that you cannot do too much about, but if, there is, but if, if you see some function here which has been written by you or some function that has been written by your code coming here, it, you might want to check it once. Also, you can look at the wall time. Once you look at the wall time, you will get the functions which has taken the maximum amount of time to execute. You can click on this link and you will go to a page where you will get a, get more detail about the parent-child child graph where it shows the parent function and the child functions Right, so because this, this function does not have a child function, so we do not have anything here. This will help you understand how much time this function has taken or, 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 or is it its, its child function which is taking too much time. Right, let's look at some of the function like module invoke all. Module invoke all has this many parents, this many functions called module invoke all. Then there are Then there are child functions. Now you can look at the child function, which function is taking too much time. So you can see call user func array is the one which is taking too much time. Let's go to this function. 
Entity token is the one which has taken the maximum amount of time. Entity token generate. So we can go on deep diving inside this until unless we find out what exactly is taking too much time. You'll find multiple calls like this. At the end, you will reach at a function which, which would obviously be the one responsible for the huge time that the parent function has taken. Right? For example, here again, entity token. So you can keep iterating through it and you will finally land to the function which has taken too much time. Let's go to go back to You have a comparison chart here which shows again the name of the functions which is taking too much time. You can sort it by CPU or the memory usage. Any function which is com uh, computation uh, heavy on computation will take too much of memory. Besides this, uh, there is a very beautiful call graph that we have here. Okay, since there's no time to debug this, but I'll tell you what a call graph is. Call graph is basically a map of of the fun of the hierarchy, or it's a hierarchy of functions that is th that that are that have been called. It's a flowchart diagram, which gives you a very good insight about what exactly is happening in the function in the in the whole uh, execution cycle. Let me see if that works. It was working for a while. Looks like it is working. Yeah. Thank you. Takes a while to generate the call graph. To be able to use call graph, you will need uh, another uh, another uh, software called uh, Graph GraphWiz which you can install and then uh, XHPROF will start using GraphWiz and it will generate a call graph. It's taking too much time. There is also, uh, you can also do a, a, a comparative look at, the, uh, at different uh, instances of, or, the, or if you have, Profile a page multiple times. You can com also compare uh, the kind of results that uh, came out of those two, two different profiling. This is useful when you are debugging your or when you are doing performance, uh, you know, improvements. So you have a call right now. You made some changes. You again profile it, and then you can see the differences. So I have 12 call count counts right now. I can I can see how those 12 co call counts differed. To do this in a better way, what I can do is I can look at the IDs of different calls here, right? So I'll just try to compare two different call to, to the same URL. To do that, you just need to copy this unique ID of that call. Go to some other call, and you can get a performance delta by copying and pasting that ID. Now it shows a comparative analysis of the yeah, it it shows a compar comparative analysis of of the two different runs. First run took had eleven like 1,11,000 function calls, the second one had only 374, which is a minus 99.7% change. The amount of memory that had taken here also differed a lot. The inclusive CPU time and had also changed. If you want to look at functions, function calls, you can also get a comparative study of the two function calls. Ten minutes left. Okay.
So, uh, then we have a small pretty graph here which shows a function name which has, which has taken too much time. There are certain terminologies that we need to understand here and we will we'll quickly look at each of them. Uh, so the different profile that we have seen is flat profile. Flat profile is the one that we see uh, say, uh, saw on the, the first page. The first page of access block is the flat profile. The hierarchical profile is the function uh, child and parent uh, relation that we saw by clicking on any of the functions. Then there's a diff report which, saw, which we saw by generating the delta. That is a diff report. The final is call view graph which we are not able to see because it's, it didn't work right now. There's a memory profile, again we saw uh, by sorting this, uh, this by memory, you will get a memory profile and you can get a memory information regarding this. Uh, we discussed about inclusive wall time. Inclusive wall time is the time that has been taken by a function and its, its, uh, its child function. Exclusive is the only time that has been taken by the function. Wall time is again the amount of time, total time re uh, required to re uh, render that function, including its child. CPU time is the kernel time and user uh, CPU clocks. So it's important to understand this terminology to be able to use XHProf. Uh, the next thing is Xdebug. Installing Xdebug is very easy. What you can do is you can go, go to xdebug.org and there's a wizard.php. You just need to copy and paste your PHP info file there. You just need to paste your uh, PHP info file here and it will tell you the step-by-step -step instructions to install XD, xdebug. Once you install xdebug, you can configure it with any IDE you like. You can con configure it with Eclipse or uh, NetBeans or uh, PHP Storm. So I have xdebug configured with my uh, NetBeans. Let's see how we can... Um, profile our application using xdebug and netbeans. Installation of xdebug is similar to xsprof. Prof. You need to do either make, make install or you can download it from PCL. Uh, to be able to profile this, I'll first, we, what we need to set is a, is a breakpoint. A breakpoint is a place where our application halts and waits for, uh, for, for our inspection, right? There are certain certain variables and call stacks that, uh, that we can inspect at a breakpoint. To set a breakpoint, you just need to find a desired location where you want to set a breakpoint. So I'm setting a breakpoint right now at index.php in the Drupal bootstrap process. I want to see what happens in Drupal bootstrap. I've set a breakpoint here. I'll go to index.php and I'll start debugging it. As soon as you click on debug, it will fire your browser window with the debug parameters. Nothing will happen here unless you go back to your IDE. Now I can see variables here on the index.php we have certain super global variables. I can see the session ID here that is being set, the environment variables that, that are being set. I can inspect each one of, the, one of these variables. I have a call stack. We will not have anything in call stack right now because we are at index.ph. When we go deeper, we'll have more stuff in the call stack. So we were finally at header.php. This is introduced by xhprof. We can skip this. So this, so there are few ways to navigate through your code. One is to is to step into, other is step out, and other is step over. Step step into means you move into the next line of the. You step, step step inside the function. If you are on a on a function right now, you can step inside the function. Step out means you are going out of the function. Step over means just uh, do not get inside the function. Just move along the next line, the same function, right? So, like this, you can navigate. You can further navigate, and you can keep watching your variables. As I keep navigating, my variables and my call stack gets updated. Right? You can also monitor the, uh, the amount of memory that is being uh, consumed here. 
and you can keep moving or you can step over and come come up to again bootstrap now my execution has finished so i can go to the page and the page would have page would have loaded here i need to stop this session right so so there are certain certain key uh, terms that we need to understand in uh, in xdebug one is the breakpoints breakpoints the place in our in our execution of program where we want the execution to halt so that we can inspect the various aspects of the program then there's a call stack call stack is the hierarchy of the function call the function uh, the parent function or similar to the call stack that we saw in Uh, exit prof continuous if you want to go to the next breakpoint you can set multiple breakpoints like we set one breakpoint right now you can set multiple breakpoints and you can move from one breakpoint to the other for that you use continue then there are step over step into and step out which we saw how it works right i think that's all i had for today any questions or anything you want me to Reiterate. Thank you, guys.